Hey, Kipsters, it's Mrs. Walsh. Today we're going to finish up reading Fantastic Mr. Fox by finishing up Chapter 17 and reading Chapter 18 and then answering some questions about the end of the story. For those teammates who have been watching and following along with the last um, two weeks of videos, we are in a fiction story right now, which means our thinking jobs are CPSL. Today, when our story wraps up, we're really gonna focus on the S part today with just what was the solution to the problem. We know that in many fiction stories, there's some kind of a happy ending at the end. Our story has already been really different from other fiction stories with all of the different problems and solutions. So today we're gonna to do some thinking about what was the ending of the story and was it a happy ending or not for the characters. So our opening questions today are, I want you to think about what would be a happy ending for the fox? What would be a happy ending for the farmers? And do you think that all the characters have a happy ending? So when we think about all of the events in our stories that have led up to this last chapter, what would a happy ending look like? And do we think that it's possible for all the characters to have a happy ending? You can pause this video and think about that question yourself, and then we'll pick up and continue from there. In the second half of chapter 17, the characters in the story are going to give a toast to Mr. Fox. I wanted to go over what the word toast meant before we read that part of the story. So a toast happens normally with a gathering of people, and it's when someone stands up to give a short speech about whoever or whatever is being celebrated. For example, in the bottom picture, toasts often happen at weddings or events where there are lots of people all together, and individuals will take turns saying things about the event. So in the case of a wedding, they might say something positive or tell a story about the people who are getting married. In the story today, the animals are going to give a toast at the feast to thank and celebrate Mr. Fox and all of his ideas, which ended up helping the animals survive. Since we're wrapping up the story today, I want to make sure everybody knows where we are. So far in the story, most of the chapters have been about the farmers trying to get and catch Mr. Fox and his families. It's also been a lot of Mr. Fox and other animals who live underground trying to feed their families and stay safe and away from the farmers. In the story, we've talked about this, how there are lots of very small problems in the story, but they all go back to the largest problem, which is Mr. Fox trying to keep his family safe and from being caught from the farmers. In the chapter Miss Rhonda read yesterday, we know that the animals got lucky and they escaped Mabel. And now the animals are all gathering together to celebrate the feast and to celebrate still being safe. So far in our story, Mr. Fox has been super successful. Today, we're gonna learn how the story ends and if his success continues. We're gonna pick up on page 76 today and go through the end of chapter 17. So as we're ending this chapter, I want your focus question to be, what has Mr. Fox done to solve his problems throughout the story? The animals are going to touch on a few of the actions so far in the story that have led them to the feast and led them to being all together. Well, let's get started. My darling, cried Mrs. Fox, jumping up and hugging Mr. Fox. We couldn't wait. Please forgive us. Then she hugged the smallest fox of all, and Mrs. Badger hugged Badger, and everyone hugged everyone else. Amid shouts of joy, the great jars of cider were placed upon the table, and Mr. Fox and Badger and the smallest fox sat down with the others. You must remember no one had eaten a thing for several days. They were ravenous. So for a while, there was no conversation at all. There was only the sound of crunching and chewing as the animals attacked the succulent food. At last, Badger stood up. He raised his glass of cider and called out, A toast! I want you all to stand and drink a toast to our dear friend who has saved our lives this day, Mr. Fox. To Mr. Fox, they all shouted, standing up and raising their glasses. To Mr. Fox, long may he live. 
Then Mrs. Fox got shyly to her feet and said, I don't want to make a speech. I just want to say one thing, and it is this. My husband is a fantastic fox. Everyone clapped and cheered. Then Mr. Fox himself stood up. This delicious meal, he began. Then he stopped. In the silence that followed, he let fly a tremendous belch. There was laughter and more clapping. This delicious meal, my friends, he went on, is courtesy is by courtesy of Messrs. Boggus, Bunce, and Bean. More cheering and laughter. And I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. He let fly another colossal belch. Better out than in, said Badger. Thank you, said Mr. Fox, grinning hugely. But now, my friends, let us be serious. Let us think of tomorrow and the next day and the days after that. If we go out, we will be killed, right? Right, they shouted. We'll be shot before we've gone a yard, said Badger. Exactly, said Mr. Fox. But who wants to go out anyway? Let me ask you that. We are all diggers, every one of us. We hate the outside. The outside is full of enemies. We only go out because we have to, to get food for our families. By now, my friends, we have an entirely new setup. We have a safe tunnel leading to three of the finest stores in the world. We do indeed, said Badger. I've seen them. And you know what this means, said Mr. Fox. It means that none of us need ever go out into the open again. There was a buzz of excitement around the table. I therefore invite you all, Mr. Fox went on, to stay here with me forever. Forever, they cried. My goodness, how marvelous. And Rabbit said to Mrs. Rabbit, my dear, just think, we're never going to be shot at again in our lives. We will make, said Mr. Fox, a little underground village with streets and houses on each side, separate houses for badgers and moles and rabbits and weasels and foxes. And every day I will go shopping for you all. And every day we will eat like kings. The cheering that followed this speech went on for many minutes. That's how the our chapter 17 ends. And this is where we leave the animals who live in the hill. I want us to think about two questions before we catch up and see what the farmers have been up to in chapter 18. The two questions for this chapter are on the screen. Question one says, why did Badger and Mrs. Fox toast Mr. Fox? This question is really closely related to the second one. So we're gonna, actually gonna think about both questions at the same time. The second question is, what does this action say about how Badger and Mrs. Fox feel about Mr. Fox? So we're thinking about why they toasted him and how do they feel about Mr. Fox? You can press pause on the video while you think about your answer and then I'll share my thoughts after you have your thoughts. When I think about these two questions, and I think about why Mrs. Fox and Badger toasted Mr. Fox, I actually think they toasted him because of how they were feeling. Mrs. Fox and Badger have both expressed in earlier chapters how worried and scared they were for themselves and for their families. Now that Mr. Fox has announced this plan to keep everyone fed and everyone able to stay safe, I think that Mrs. Fox and Badger are feeling extremely grateful and joyful to have a plan and for Mr. Fox to have been so clever in coming up with the plan. I think that because they're feeling happy, joyful, and grateful, they wanted to make a speech to express how thankful they are to Mr. Fox and the rest of the animals. I can't believe it, but here we are at chapter 18, the last chapter in our text. Our focus question for this chapter is, how does Roald Dahl end his story? And why do you think he ended it this way? We already know how the story ends for the animals. Now we're gonna read and see how it ends for the farmers. Chapter 18, still waiting. Outside the fox's hole, 
Bogus and Bunts and Bean sat beside their tents with their guns on their laps. It was beginning to rain. Water was trickling down the necks of the three men and into their shoes. He won't stay down there much longer now, Bogus said. The brute must be famished, Bunts said. That's right, Bean said. He'll be making a dash for it any moment. Keep your guns handy. They sat there by the hole, waiting for the fox to come out. And so far as I know, they are still waiting. So that's the end of chapter 18 and the end of the whole story. So now that we know how the animals ended the story, I want you to think about what are the farmers doing at the end of the story? We know that based on what the animals are doing, what the farmers are doing is very different. The farmers are still waiting outside the hole. They don't know the plan that the fox has come up with and they don't expect him to have come up with a plan because they're still expecting him to come out of the hole in search for food. This story's ending is very unique. The last sentence reads, as far as I know, they are still waiting. This last sentence leaves the reader to wonder what happens next in the story. Using evidence from the story, what do you think happens next? You're going to write your answer in the comment box below the video. If this story were to continue, what do you think would happen next? You can write about what you think happens next for the farmers or for the animals or for both of them. I cannot wait to read your comments. Now that we have finished Fantastic Mr. Fox, I want to give you a little bit of information about our next text. The next text is The Watsons Go to Birmingham. This is a really great historical fiction story that we're going to read for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, Miss Outlaw is going to do the third grade ELA video to give us some background information about the story and life in the South during the 1960s during the Civil Rights Movement. We'll actually start reading the text on Wednesday, but make sure you log in and watch Miss Outlaw's video tomorrow on Tuesday so that you're ready to jump into the video and jump into the book. See you guys on Wednesday.